Hello grade 7 students, in this video we will talk about semester 1 exams and this is a revision for the semester 1 exam topics. In this video we will talk about the digestion and respiration which are the topics needed for the semester exams. So first we're going to talk about the chapter 1 activity 3 digestion pages 23 to 29 and about chapter 2 respiration pages 30 to 36. So let's start with digestion. Digestion is the transformation of large and complex food molecules into simplest one. These are called nutrients to be used by the body cells in order to produce the energy needed for the body cells. So complex food, whenever they transform into nutrients, this process is called digestion. Digestive system is divided into digestive tube or digestive gland. Digestive tube, organs through which the food pass, while the digestive glands, organs through which food doesn't pass. Organs of the digestive tube they are the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and finally the anus, where excess food is going to be excreted in the form of waste. Whereas digestive glands, they are salivary glands, gastric glands, pancreas, liver, and intestinal glands. What is the function of digestive glands? Digestive glands are known to secrete digestive juices into their site of action. What are these digestive juices? Let's see. Digestive glands, the juice secreted and the site of action. Where is the site of the action or where is this juice secreted? So first, we have salivary gland. It secretes a juice. It's called saliva. Where inside the mouth. While gastric glands, they secrete the gastric juice in the stomach. While we have here the three glands that secrete their juices into the small intestine. We have pancreas, it secretes pancreatic juice. Liver, it secretes bile. And intestinal glands secretes intestinal juice. Also digestion is divided into two types. Here we have mechanical digestion and sometimes we have the chemical digestion. Mechanical digestion, what is the definition? And the chemical digestion, step by step. Mechanical digestion, it breaks down food into smaller pieces. It cuts the food into smaller pieces. And it keeps the food moving through the long digestive tube. Types of mechanical digestion. In the mouth, we have chemical digestion. Mechanical digestion is called chewing. In the stomach, we have the churning in the small intestine we have peristaltic movement chemical digestion involves the digestion of food by the help of the digestive juices so it breaks down food into simple nutrients occurs in the mouth in the stomach and the small intestine by the help of the juices so here we can conclude that the mechanical digestion is very important since mechanical digestion cuts the food into smaller pieces then chemical digestion will continue so here mechanical is very important to continue the chemical digestion so here we can conclude that mechanical digestion of food it facilitates what well, the meaning of facilitate it helps the chemical digestion and allow the digestion to finish faster that that's why eating small pieces of food is so much easier than eating large pieces of food. So small pieces of food, they are digested faster than large pieces. Why? Because mechanical digestion cut the food into smaller pieces. That's why they insist to chew the food well before swallowing. Since chewing the food well helps in the process of cutting the food into smaller pieces. Now let's move for respiration. To talk about the respiratory system of humans, 
you have to know that the most important organ in the respiration is the lungs. So the lungs represent the most important organ. Let's go now to the pathway of the air through the respiratory system. It starts at the nose, then it moves to the pharynx, to the larynx, to the trachea, to the bronchus, to the bronchioles, and finally we move to the alveoli. Breathing is the actual mechanical intake of air. Breathing consists of two main phases. First phase is called inhalation and the second is called exhalation. Both of them, they represent the respiratory movements. So in, so we inhale air. So the air will enter inside the body. While exhalation, we exhale the air. So the air will exit outside the body. So inhalation is the process of taking in air. Inhalation. While exhalation is releasing air out or exit. So these are the two respiratory movements. Breathing in and breathing out. During breathing in, during inhalation, the chest expands. While breathing out, exhalation, the chest contracts. Here we have the diaphragm. It contracts during inhalation while it relaxes during exhalation. So this table is showing the different movements during inhalation and exhalation of the thoracic cage, state of the lungs, volume of the thoracic cage, and the pathway of the earth. Let's start with the position of the thoracic cage. The position is raised whenever you breathe and the thoracic cage will raise while during exhalation it's lowered. State of the lungs during inhalation, they are filled with air, so they are inflated, while during exhalation, they are deflated. Volume of the thoracic cage, sure, it will increase, while during exhalation, it damage or it decrease. Pathway of the air. The air will enter from outside to inside during inhalation, so we get air from the environment around us and enter inside the body while during exhalation the opposite from inside the body to the outside what are the characteristics that make the alveoli aside for the gas with change we have two main characteristics this year we have it's rich in blood vessels it's called highly vascularized you have to know both highly vascularized or rich in blood vessels and the second one you have to know thin wall Let's move to the respiratory movement in insects. Here we'll talk about the grasshopper. The grasshopper here, the abdomen is raised, while in the second figure, the abdomen is lowered. So, during inhalation, the abdomen is lowered, while during exhalation, the abdomen is raised. These are the respiratory movements of the grasshopper. If the abdomen is lowered, the grasshopper inhaled air while during exhalation when the abdomen is raised the grasshopper has exhaled air these are the anatomy of the grasshopper where we have three regions we have the head we have the thorax and we have the abdomen where the abdomen contains particles they are used for breathing Till now, we have two respiratory organs. In human, we have, or in mammals, we have the lungs. And in insects, we have trachea. So here, both of them, they live in land. So what about the aquatic life fund? First phase, it's my turn. Let's move to the first term, operculum. Or it's called the gill cover. So gill cover, they are the operculum. And they are the series of bone, a group of bone found in the fish that helps in protecting the gills and these lines they represent the gill slits so this is the operculum shown in this figure respiratory movements of fish in this figure the mouth is opened while the operculum is closed so the water will enter through the mouth inside the fish so this is called inhalation the second figure the mouth is closed while the operculum is opened so this is what we call it by exhalation 
So here, the fish respires through inhalation and exhalation. So when the mouth is opened, the fish is inhaling, while when the mouth is closed, it's exhaling. So you have to know that these notes are during inhalation, the mouth is open, while the operculum is closed. So the water will flow into the fish, while during exhalation, the mouth of the fish is closed, while the operculum is open. So water will flow out of the operculum. So now, what is the respiratory organ of the fish? Is it the operculum? No. Is it the gill slits or the mouth? No. Sure, it's called the gills. So respiratory movements, they allow the renewal of the air or water in contact with the respiratory. Now we'll move to the graph drawing. Let's make quick revision how to draw the graph. Drawing the graph, you have to use the data available in the table or the text to draw the curve, histogram or a pie chart. This year we have to do only the curve and you have to use the information found in the table. First, you have to add a title for the graph. You have to label the axis, the X axis and the Y axis with the variable for the X and the results for the Y. You have to use the units and you have to put a scale. So these are very important. One, title to the graph. Number two, you have to put the title, label the axis, X axis and the Y axis. You have to use the units and you have to put the scale. For example, this application, we place a green aquatic plant in a large test test tube filled with water. We connect an oximeter to the test tube. Why do we connect an oximeter? Oximeter is used to measure the amount of oxygen gas. Here, we start recording the amount of oxygen every one minute, and the results are shown in the table below. First, you have to know that we have this shape. This is the shape of the graph. The one that's placed above in the table should be below in the graph. So the time in minutes should be on the x-axis. This is the time in minutes. While the amount of oxygen gas here is going to be on the y-axis. Here, you have to determine what is the scale. Time in minutes, we make 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 0 is the point of intersection. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you can move one by one. So every box in the graph paper, you can take it as one minute. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. While on the y-axis, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, and 0, the amount of oxygen is decreasing. So if you want to analyze this, we will analyze this after determining the scale on the y-axis. What is the scale on y? We're moving two by two. So you can move two, four, six, eight, ten to reach the ten. You can't move, for example, if we have uh, four, you can't move four immediately. You don't have to skip. You can move four, for example, and then you have to move six, eight. This is false. You have to move step by step. You have to move two by two. So you have moved two by two from the beginning. You can step. Okay. Here, if I want to analyze the, this table, at time zero, the amount of oxygen gas for the aquatic plant was 10 centimeter cube. As the time increases from zero to five, what happened? The amount of oxygen gas for the aquatic plant decreased from 10 to zero centimeter cube this is the analysis you have to say increases or decreases and you have to use the values so as the time increases from zero to five minutes the amount of oxygen gas for the aquatic plant decreases from 10 to zero centimeter cube here i use the units for the amount of oxygen and the units for time which is minute so here is the graph first of all we determined the scale. Scale on the x-axis, every one centimeter correspond to one minute. And on y-axis, every one centimeter correspond to two centimeter cube. This is the scale. Or you can use this. You can use one of the boxes. Sure, using a pencil. And the graph should be drawn using a pencil only. So here, every one centimeter correspond to one minute. Since we move one by one. 
So here it's one minute. And on the y-axis, we move two by two. So every one centimeter doesn't say two centimeter. It's two centimeter cube. This is the unit. Okay. Note, we can't move as we want. We have to move according to the scale. Sometimes I will give you the scale. So you have to pay attention to this. Sometimes I'll give you a given. This is the scale. It's going to be given sometimes. Sometimes it's going to be given. So you have to pay attention to this. And others, you have to decide the scale. So whenever you decide the scale, you have to move gradually according to the scale. For example, if we don't have the value 2 on the y-axis, can we move 0, 4, then we move 6? Can we move here 4, and then we move 6, and then we move 8? Here, I dropped one box. I say that's 4 centimeter cube. This is not the scale. So you have to move 2 by 2. Okay? So you have to move 2 by 2 in order to be the scale is correct here is the title of the x-axis and here is the title of the y-axis also you have to give the title for the graph what is the title of the graph always oh, graph showing the variation of the y which one is the y this one going the variation of the amount of the oxygen gas for the aquatic plant in centimeter cube as a function of the x-axis which one on the x-axis the time in minute these are very important for the graph. The graph should be drawn using a pencil, should be drawn on a graph paper. So please make sure you have a graph paper in your exam. Good luck, guys. See you. Bye-bye.